Welcome back, guys, to another episode of The Road to Code. My name is Gerard. And, and I'm John. And I am Vic. And this is episode eight. That's right. Number ocho. Number numero huit in French. <laughs> And if you guys would like to support us in this cool little show that we got going on, uh, we have a Patreon that uh, I could show you. Uh, on the first level of Patreon, we have a $5 a month where you get a free coffee mug, a uh, Road to Code coffee mug, and early notifications of our YouTube videos, and a, year, a yearly postcard expressing our appreciation. And then our next level, $8 a month, you get everything from tier one. And then also, um, they, so if, if you, uh, you know, subscribe, you get to be a, ho- a co guest host on our podcast every quarter and get to, you know, talk about technology with us. Um, and then our VIP Patreons, $10 a month, get everything from, uh, the previous tiers, and also get the raw footage of each episode, and um, get to see all of our mess ups and screw ups. A lot of bloopers and blunders. <laughs> but yeah, but that's what we got. Very cool, Gerard. More Linux stuff. That yeah. command line. That command line is just never ending. There's just so much to do there. What are we covering in this episode? We will be viewing the contents of a file, sorting those files, and searching the contents of a file. Yeah, we got some fun stuff coming up. This is really cool. I say we get right into it. want to share your screen, and we'll do a little review, and then we'll start utilizing some of the mix and matches of of these um of these uh commands yes where's the linux box oh there it is gosh it looks like the it looks like it's the um (laughs) the real machine the real Mm -hmm. mccoy for the uh benefit of the kids at home beach can we make your terminal window a little bit bigger and then maybe increase the font size so let's do a little review. We have a um, couple of different uh, commands, right? So let's um, let's go over. Let's let's go ahead and check out what you got in this current folder. What what folder are you in right now? By the way, that'd be all right. So we have our playground. So let's go. Oh wait, we got the top ten cities, huh? The top ten cities, top cities, and all that good stuff. Last 10 cities. Okay, very cool. Um, so let's let's do a quick review with our cat command. Remember, the cat command is a command that allows us to view the contents of a file, right? So, like say, for example, um let's look at um let's look at last 10 cities. Let's just do a cat on last 10 cities. Oh yeah, I remember these. These are the uh, cities around the world. Not around the world, but in the, the US maybe. So what's interesting is that the cat command has a counterpart to it called TAC. And essentially TAC is just cat spelled backwards. So if you were to TAC the last 10 cities, let's see what happens there. Reverses it. It reverses Whoa. it. So if you ever want to see something in reverse order from what's in the file, it actually used use TAC instead of cat. Um, there's also another command that is a complement to the cat and the TAC is called the rev. So if you do REV, kind of like rev pizza, but we do rev last 10 cities. Whoa, what the? <laughs> it actually reverses every line. That is crazy. 
Now, what's cool is that we can go and run Rev on the last 10 cities and we can pipe it into TAC. <laughs> so you just do up arrow and then pipe TAC. <laughs> So not only does it reverse the order, it reverses the spelling of the actual words. It's pretty wild, huh? That's funny. It is. I, I don't That's know. Weird. I don't know in what occasion you would use a rev. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the tack uh, being useful, but I'm not sure exactly how we would use the rev. But I just thought it was kind of cool <laughs> to have those commands there. So it's cat for I, I guess you can say that it means that I categorize a file. So you're just showing the category or, you know, the, the, the file itself. And then you have TAC, which is the reverse of cat. And then you have rev, which is reverses the spelling of every line in the cat, but then you can pipe it into TAC and it reverses the order, which <laughs> is displayed. So kind of cool. Mm hmm. That's pretty neat. Beach is not impressed. <laughs> I just find it weird. Like, why would anyone use that? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe if you want to, I can only see it when, if you want to like pipe it into something else, like you have the last, last three letters and you're trying to find like, maybe ends with GR and then you could pipe it into something that puts it in alphabetical order. Oh, in reverse alphabetical yeah, order reverse based alphabetical. On, alphabetical. on the backward spelling? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. <laughs> it's, kind, it's kind of like if you get pulled over by the police and they say, can you, can you tell me the alphabet backwards? You're like, wait, wait, let me get my terminal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that for you right now. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird. I don't know what the rev would be used for, but it's there. Let's, um, let's clear the screen and um, let's do another listing and see what, what else we can play with there. So you have, so you have the top cities. Top cities is one that is, is quite big. So let's go ahead and do the, uh, let's, let's cat the top cities. Oh, top 10 cities. Or is it top cities? Top cities is fine. Because top 10 is only 10 of them. Oh, yeah. So let's go ahead and grab the, the states from, from this right here. And we can use the cut command for that. Yeah. So this was quite a bit. So why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and um, go ahead and up arrow and we'll redirect the standard output to a file using the greater than, greater than sign. And we'll just set it, we'll, we'll set the name to be just cities.txt. And this will make it easy for us to just do a cat on just cities.txt. So that flew right by the screen. And in order for you to be able to see the rest, you got to kind of scroll up, but yep. If this was a lot more, you probably want to be able to, to navigate through the actual listing. There's a command called um, less. I'm sorry, is it less? Yes. So if you do less on just cities.txt, let's see what happens there. So it's interesting that it only gave you the oh. first page. Yeah. You oh. can use your map, you can use your, your arrows to go up and down. And you can even go up. So it actually lets you navigate using your, your up and down arrows. That's well, pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. So you can if you're looking for something specific where you've already filtered it out and stuff, you can use those arrows to go back and forth. I thought that was kind of cool. And once you're done, you just got to press Q and you can go ahead and get out of there. It brings you back. In fact, if you just clear your screen and then go ahead and type in that less command for the just like cities. That? 
Yeah, just with the with just cities. And if you just hit Q, I think it just it just comes back. It's like there's like some type of um, like an overview, you know, where it says here, let me take over the screen for the moment and let you scroll up and down on the list. And then when you hit Q, that like view just collapses and then you're, it puts you back into your command. And so I thought, I thought I noticed that and I thought, yeah, that's kind of cool. I mean, it actually takes over your terminal so that you can scroll uh, back and forth while, while you're working with it. There's also a, a command that allows you to view the first five letters. I mean, the first five lines of a file, right? So if we do head on just cities, is it first five or first? Um, yeah, you can just do just cities. We can, we'll play around with the, how many line counts we, uh, we get back. So this oh, gives you 10, six. Okay. So it gives you 10. So if you want to limit to like five, you would use like a dash N with a five in there. So let's see what that does. So it gives you five. You, you can limit to whatever number and you can do the same thing with tail. So if you do tail on just cities, it'll give you the first 10 by default. And then you can also do the tail with the dash N5. Hey, BJ, if you, um, if you just type in JUS and then tab, it'll autocomplete for you. Test it. Ha. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll give you the, it'll give you the five and stuff. Um, and then you can set whatever number, like if you want 20, if you want 15, whatever number you're, you're actually looking at. Um, you can go ahead and, and get it there. There's a new command that is new on our block. It's called WC for word count. So if we do, let's do word count on just cities. Cool. It gave us three different numbers, huh? Yeah, that's weird. Now, I think we could do a word count. Oh, I think it's words or is it lines, words, and letters? I think that's what it is. So let's do a word count dash L and let's see if it matches one of these numbers. 326 is the, the lines. So that means that there's probably 418 words because some of these cities are two, um, yeah. two words, and then a total of 3,622 3, characters in there. That's what it pretty much comes down to. Whoa. Kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, let's, um, let's play around with uh, some um, random word generators. Um, so if you go to a website by the name of randomwordgenerator.com go ahead and open up firefox in in this um firefox so it's a fire hog random mm -hmm. word generator dot com cool let's do a total of 50 words yeah let's see what that let's go ahead and generate random words and you can go and just copy all those right there just start with economics and then just copy it. Yep, all the way down. And then copy that and paste it into a file. So open up your, your file explorer. And um, yeah, new file. Um, you might have to use, oh, there you go. Uh, it's a folder name. Oh. You may have to go to use a touch command. Yeah, let's go open that up and, and paste it in there and save it. Cool. Bunch of random words. Go ahead and close this. And um, there's, um, there's also a, um, we, we need to create uh, two more files. 
Let's go okay. over to another website called random.org. And um, if you scroll down a little bit, you see in the part where it says numbers, mm -hmm. we're going to select um, the integer set generator. Yeah. Okay. So in this integer set generator, we're going to generate 100 sets with one unique random integer in each. And we'll set the values between zero and nine. And then um, uncheck the box where it says number the set sequentially. Cool. Let's grab that. Oh. <laughs> And let's put it into a um, put it into a file. Uh, do um, random random int random ints dot text. and save that. And then go back to that website one more time. And this time we're going to do one hundred. with one unique and we're going to go from we're going to go from one to nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine so five nines and then uncheck the number the set sequentially let's go ahead and just get the sets on that see what we get yeah Whoa, let's grab that. And um, I don't know what we would call this random large number, random, random large numbers or random large ints. And then let's go and modify that puppy. Very cool. Now that we got some. Now that we got some, um, some, some files with some random information in there, and it's cool that we were able to generate these files randomly. I mean, went to a website, give us some random words. So there's, you can tell that there's just nothing up our sleeve. Well, that's because we have no sleeves. So <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a command. It's called sort. So if we run sort, let's say it on random words. So sort random words. Or wait, let's do a cat first on random words. So just so that we can see the, the order. So yeah, there's anger at the bottom. You see, you see at the bottom, you see anger at the bottom. At the top, what's at the top? Economics. Economics. Okay, so let's run sort on random words. Now what's at the top? Anger. Yeah. Economics is right where it needs to be. And at the bottom, we we'll probably have Z for zero. Kind of cool. Now, if we want them in reverse order, we can just do a sort and we could pipe that into TAC. And now it does it in reverse. But organically, you can actually just do sort dash R. So if you up arrow twice, you can add the dash R. So that's our, that's your organic functionality. So there's a sort. Um, and if you need to, if you need, you know, if you have a lot of them, you can also sort and you can pipe it into less. So if you just up arrow to your, the one that has TAC and replace TAC with less. Yeah, so now you can, it'll pipe it into there and you can move up and down and then just hit Q and you'll be done. So yeah, there's that. There's a sort. Um, what else do we got? Let's, let's try to run the sort on the, on the numbers, on the, um, on the large, on the random large ints. So here we have a bunch of large random numbers, large random integers. Let's run the sort on this command, see what it does. 
So you'll notice that it didn't put them in numerical order. And this is because it's actually using, it uses, it wants to use like the alphabet sorting um, on the numbers. So all the ones are tops, all the twos are on top, all the threes, all the fours, all the five. And it kind of puts them in that sequence where the actual value doesn't really, it doesn't take the value into, into consideration. So in order to tell it that it needs to sort based on the numbers, we have to run the sort with a dash N on it. So now if you scroll up, you'll see that the smaller uh, numbers are yeah. on top. Kind of cool. And if we want to reverse them, then we just do dash NR. It'll reverse that. So if you up arrow and just add an R after the N. Hmm. Of course, you can always use attack if you feel like it, but piping, so much overhead, so old fashioned, <laughs> so 80s. <laughs> so let's go look at the, um, let's go look at the, um, let's do a sort on the random int file on the random int ints text which is all with all the single numbers. So you see that it puts all the zeros on top, all the ones, all the twos, all the threes. But what if we want to look at these in a unique value? So we can do the sort and add a dash U for unique. And it'll just give you the non-duplicate values. So this is, you know, the, com the commands themselves are, are pretty, pretty, pretty powerful. I, I like these. Um, and then also, if you want to do them in reverse, you could do the dash UR. So if you just up arrow and add an R after the U, it'll give it to you in reverse order. So that R is always the option there. Um, let's go and check out some um, sorting when you're working with the file system itself. Um, let's go over and do an LS on the on var log. So it'd be forward slash var forward slash log. Yeah, it's quite a few. Oh, looks like a flag there. Red, white, and green. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> um, if we add the uh, dash L, It'll give us the uh, the long version. So it gives it to us in a longer format. Um, and let's just say that we want to grab, um, I don't know, the top 20. Let's just do, um, let's just pipe that command into head. And we'll do, um, we'll do a dash N20. So it'll give us the first 20, right? And, um, and let's just say that we want to sort these on the size. So we, were good. we can do a, we do a up, up arrow and we can pipe that into the sort command. And then we can, um, we can do a, a, a dash K and then a space, and we'll, we'll add a five in there. So we'll say column five. So we, if we start from the left, the the privilege column or the, the privileges, the R, W, R, R, all that stuff is the privileges, the owner, and then the other one is the owner as well and the who has access to it, and then the... The size. So if we count is one, two, three, four, five. So it's column number five happens to be the um, the size. So if we sort on that, and then we'll add. Um, now remember, we need to add. Um, oh yeah, look at this is interesting. You see how it sorted on that, but it it put an alphabetical sort. So it put zero, and then all the ones, and then all the threes, and then all the fours, all the eights, and all the nines. When in reality, we want it to be based on 
the on the numeric value. So if we just add an n to the to the five, you don't have to put a space. You can just put an n. Now we get the value, the size of it. And then if we want it in reverse, we just up arrow add the R and it'll reverse it for us. Now you get the largest ones on top. Wow. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Interesting. So there is another thing. Um, so these are pretty, pretty large. So like, say, for example, if you were to grab that first file, how many, how many, um, how many bytes is that? If you were to say in human readable format, well, how, how many bytes, what would you call that? The size? Um, It'd probably be like 17 K for kilobytes, right? So if we were to add the H to the, to the dash L, so if we up arrow, see how you get the, the K on there? Oh, yeah. Now, we're sorting it, but it doesn't recognize it because now you have letters introduced. So instead of the, um, instead of the N, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to replace the N with an H so that it sorts it in human readable uh, format. So if you just replace the NR with an H. Same thing. Now you get the sorting correctly. And then you can do it in reverse. So you can just up arrow and add the R. It'll put the 17K on top. Kind of cool. Very. Oh, man, it goes on and on and on. So that's the sorting of the contents of the file. I'll tell you what, there is um, the, the search command that uh, we're going to be talking about um, or, or the, the searching capabilities of being able to search through files is, is pretty powerful. It's called grep, okay? But in order to use grep, we're going to have to go and, um, and download a couple of books. But I didn't want to just download any book, all right? So let's go ahead and go over to uh, Firefox. And let's go to a website called storypick.com. Check it out, Jonathan. These books are very unique. So let's go to, oh, can you, can you put a forward slash and then unique dash books, is it? Unique dash, unique dash books dot forward slash. So these are 11 books that are very unique. And so like the number one, it's written in a language that no one understands, filled with weird, strange illustration that no one has ever seen. <laughs> Clearly can't use that book. But let's scroll down to one that says Gatsby. There we go. What does that say, Jonathan? The entire novel is written without the use of the English alphabet. E. Gadsby. How does that even happen? The guy's name has all E's. Yeah. Ernest Vincent. Over Wetzel Publishing. 50,000 words. Not a single letter E. <laughs> There's a, yeah, these 11 books are, are really unique, but I was looking for something that, that had something unique to it. So there's a website that we can go and download these books. They're, they're, they're public domain. They're not, they're not um, copyrighted or nothing. If you go over to openlibrary.org. Yeah. And then look for um, the genius. So you see over on the right, it says plain text. Right down, right. I'm sorry, left, 
<laughs> it's the other right. You should know what I'm talking about. <laughs> See Download. where it says plain text down at the bottom? Download options. There you go. Right. right there. Click on that. So you can highlight this. Just do a control A and then copy it. And then go and touch a file called um, The Genius. And let's go paste it in there. Oh, yeah, save it. Cool. Let's go ahead and go to the terminal real quick. And um, let's use uh, let's use the, the, the word count, the WC command on the genius. So it looks like it has 39,000 lines on it, 313,000 words and about 2 million characters. Let's go and um, we're going to we're going to actually search to see how many e's exist in this book. So we're going to use a command called grep. And you can do grep e and then the genius. We're going to play around. Whoa. Now let's do a um let's do a um let's pipe that into the um the WC command. It'll tell us how many words, how many letters, how many lines. So it's 28,000 lines, 300,000 words have the letter E. That's pretty crazy, huh? Wow. Let's go and download Gatsby. <laughs> so we found the E's and the Gatsby claims not to have any E's. So let's go on plain text and download. So the only E should be on that title page, basically. Or any type of explanations. <laughs> and um, let's give it let's give it a, a fair go. Let's go to the top of this file. And let's get rid of, um, let's go ahead and get rid of all this part right here because this is all going to come up. So there you go. Go and get rid of up to line 39. Line 39, actually line 53. Yeah. Wait. Oh. Copyright. Yeah. Keep on going. That's all. Yeah. The, all the way to the introduction. <laughs> yeah. Or actually more because oh, yeah, the introduction still has ease. Yeah, oh. so go ahead and delete that. Introduction. Okay, there we go. And then, yeah, there we go. All the way to line 70. And then Wait. if you scroll down, is there more? It's still, yeah. Okay, so introduction. keep on going. Oh, there we go. Uh, no, no, still keep How on many going. Introductions are there. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Nine. Yeah. Wait, I think man. they're all. Th those are not actually the the story itself. All right, and then go to the way at the bottom. Way at the bottom. Yeah, because he's doing some explanations on the bottom too. Oh yeah. Oh, right up to Fenice. 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 Yeah. You can get rid of that the last few lines as well. What else is below that? Is that it? Okay, <laughs> cool. Let's save this. And let's go. Let's go and do a grep on this. I want to see. Let's see if it's really true. Yeah. So, um, well, first of all, let's do a WC on there. Let's get the counts and all that. Now, 
9,000 no. lines, 54,000 words, 20, what is that? 293,000 characters. Let's go and do a grab for E, see if it comes up. I know all the kids at home are sitting on pins and needles. Oh, what the? Did we forget something? I think we did. Uh, that's just a little paragraph still. I know. That's, that's still pretty good. I don't know where it, it's either way at top or way at bottom. Liars. I know. What is this? But you know what? Considering the fact that E is one of the most popular words in the English language, that's pretty good. <laughs> Look for the word eluding. No, no, that's a different line too. Yeah, that's line 1500. What the... But still, I mean, we go ahead and close this. That's still a fairly good way to avoid the letter E. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, he could have easily replaced V with thy. <laughs> if he really wanted to get away with it. And die with mortal or mortality, you know. And officers with, I don't know, cops. <laughs> <laughs> patrol cops. No, or just cops. You know, <laughs> patrol officers because they're just cops. But that's still, I mean, that's not bad. You know, yeah. it's kind of cool. I mean, compared to the other one that had 28,000 words yeah. <laughs> with the letter E. Or 20,000 lines with the letter E. That was a lot. So you can also, I mean, with, the, with that search, you know, you can say you want to search for something or you want to search for something that doesn't exist, right? And you would just use the, instead of, instead of the grep E, you would use the grep dash V. And that would just... Eliminate what you're what what it is that you're not looking for. So, but I thought it was kind of cool. I thought you know just rent, um, generate some random words, generate some random numbers, um, go out there just so that people don't feel like we're manipulating the files. It's like let's just go and generate some random information and try this. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, downloading just a regular book. Oh, let's go download another book. See how many E's are in there. There's a look for a book called, uh, oh, um, Shakespeare's. Is it, um, or how about Children of the Frost? It sounds like a chilling movie. There you go, the first one. We could download the text on this one. Oh, this one doesn't have oh. it. Yeah, never mind. How about uh, what's what's bread in bones? In bone, yeah, in the bone. Yep. There you go. Plain text, and download that plain text one, and highlight that puppy, and just paste it into. Let's call it bones dot text. Go ahead and say that. Let's go see how many E's are there. Oh. And we can pipe that into the, the word count, the WC command. Quite a bit. 105,000 lines with 104,000. Oh, 10,000 lines, sorry, with 104,000 words that have the letter E. I mean, E is just such a common letter. So the Gatsby is kind of impressive that it was, <laughs> it was able to pull that out. Very cool. Um, yeah. What'd you think, Beach? 
Uh, it's pretty. I like that book, Gatsby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine reading that? And <laughs> I'd be searching for the ease the whole time. <laughs> Ease. Not even paying attention to the storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those books that that are in there, if you go back to that website with the um, with the storypick.com unique books. So one of these or two of them are one sentence. The whole book is one sentence. Um Let's see, Gatsby, go to the next one right here. This one, no matter how insane, hang on, it sounds, but the author wrote the entire novel by just blinking his, blinking his eyes to the stenographer. Oh, okay. So this guy right here, the author, <coughs> I thought this was cool. He was communicating with the writer by blinking his eyes as he wrote the book. <laughs> So he didn't write the book. He was just blinking his eyes. I guess he spoke to him in Morse code or something. Oh, yeah. Totally paralyzed. Only yeah. his left wow. eye was paralyzed. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another one. Uh, sounds The entire book sounds like a nursery rhyme. He almost created an alternative language using English words. Anguish language. <laughs> nursery rhymes? So, The Rotters Club by Jonathan Coe. Jonathan. What? It contains the largest, <laughs> longest sentence in English literature with 13,955 words. Wow. <laughs> One sentence. Look at, look at the, the review. <laughs> Pretty funny. So yeah, I thought about like, ah, let's see if we could find some of that stuff. But I'm like, ah, I'm like that's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go look for thirteen thousand words in one sentence? All right. So what's in um, what's in store for the next episode, uh, Gerard? The next episode, we'll be talking about package managers, uh, how package managers work. And we'll do a demo of different package managers. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Because package managers exist in every operating system. We use them in React. You can use them in Windows. You can use them in, um, in Linux, of course. That's where it all started. <clears throat> but believe it or not, I mean, iPhone, Google, the, you know, all the different you know, phone platforms, they all use package managers for, for the same purpose. So it's kind of cool. How can people show appreciation for everything we do here? Yep. If you're enjoying the content and you're benefiting from what we're doing here, uh, why don't you guys buy us a cup of coffee? Yeah. Buy us, uh, buy us three. Buy us three. <laughs> Jonathan needs three cups of coffee right now. It looks a little oh, tired. Yeah. <laughs> all right well until next time you say bye